Hey, it's Darius, and congratulations to I-75ers who passed the exam this month and also last month. So get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, let's do a deep dive on inventory errors. And this topic could be in any accounting exam, CPA, CMA, EA. Auditors know that the easiest way for a company to overstate profit is to overstate ending inventory. And this is because ending inventory and gross profit have a direct relationship. Ending inventory up, gross profit up. Why? Why the direct relationship? The reason is because ending inventory has an inverse relationship with cost of goods sold. Ending inventory up, cost of goods sold down. So if sales are correctly stated, but ending inventory is overstated, then cost of goods sold is understated due to the inverse relationship between ending inventory and cost of goods sold. So if ending inventory is overstated, cost of goods sold is understated, and as a result, gross profit is overstated. Why? Always comes back to that inverse relationship between cost of goods sold and ending inventory. Now, the auditor needs to know the impact of inventory errors on all aspects of the financial statements, which means if ending inventory is overstated, cost of goods sold is understated, what does that mean for gross profit? Gross profit would be overstated simply because cost of goods sold is understated. And an overstated gross profit leads to an overstatement of net income. And an overstated net income leads to an overstatement of retained earnings and total stockholders' equity. And they love these kind of questions on the exam. Audit, FAR, REG, even in the EA, enrolled agent exam, you'll see this. So let's try this. Reynolds Corp. discovered a material overstatement in ending inventory after the year-end figures were reported. What effect did this error have on the year-end figures? So what's being overstated here? Ending inventory. Ending inventory is overstated. It has an inverse relationship with cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is understated. And as a result, gross profits overstated. So it's got to be A or B, right? Gross profits going to be overstated. What about current assets? Well, it says ending inventory is overstated and ending inventory is a current asset. So if ending inventory is overstated, current assets are overstated. So B is correct. Because inventory is a component of current assets, an overstatement of ending inventory will cause current assets to be overstated. And an overstatement of ending inventory, we know, causes an understatement of cost of goods sold, which leads to an overstatement of gross profit, net income, retained earnings, and total stockholders' equity. And this question asks, Reynolds Corp. discovered a material overstatement in ending inventory. What effect did this error have on the year-end financial statements? And the answer is, overstatement of current assets, overstatement of gross profit. Now, we always try to anticipate the next question. That's the I-75 difference. So what if the next question would have asked, what's the impact on working capital as a result of this overstatement in ending inventory? Well, working capital is just current assets minus current liabilities. So if current assets were overstated, then working capital would be overstated as well. There's a direct relationship between current assets and working capital. As current assets go, so goes working capital. So if they would have asked, what's the impact of a material overstatement in ending inventory on year-end working capital, you'd say, since current assets are overstated, working capital is also overstated. So we said if ending inventory is overstated, gross profits overstated, leads to an overstatement of net profit, which leads to an overstatement of retained earnings and total stockholders' equity. And this is what the auditor looks for because the easiest way to overstate net income is to overstate ending inventory. But on the exam, what if beginning inventory is overstated? What's the impact on cost of goods sold? Well, for that, we need to remember that cost of goods sold has an inverse relationship with ending inventory. But since beginning and ending inventory are opposites, then cost of goods sold must have a direct relationship with beginning inventory, since cost of goods sold has an inverse relationship with ending inventory. So if beginning inventory is overstated, cost of goods sold is overstated. And if cost of goods sold is overstated, ending inventory is understated. And if ending inventory is understated, gross profit will be understated. And an understated gross profit would lead to an understatement of net income, an understatement of retained earnings, and total stockholders' equity. So let's try this. If beginning inventory is understated by 16,000, if there are no other errors, what's the impact on cost of goods sold retained earnings, and total stockholders' equity. 
So beginning inventory has a direct relationship with cost of goods sold. As beginning inventory goes, so goes cost of goods sold. So if beginning inventory is understated by 16,000, then cost of goods sold has to be understated by 16,000. And if cost of goods sold is understated by 16,000, then gross profit would be overstated by 16,000, which means that net income and retained earnings would be overstated, and so would total stockholders' equity, all by 16,000. A says cost of goods sold understated, retained earnings overstated, total stockholders' equity overstated. That sounds good. B says cost of goods sold understated, retained earnings understated? No. C says cost of goods sold overstated? No. D, none of these? No. Letter A is correct because as beginning inventory goes, so goes cost of goods sold. This is because beginning inventory has a direct relationship with cost of goods sold for two reasons. One, beginning and ending inventory have an inverse relationship. And ending inventory and cost of goods sold have an inverse relationship. Therefore, beginning inventory must have a direct relationship with cost of goods sold. And if beginning inventory has a direct relationship with cost of goods sold, then as beginning inventory goes, so goes cost of goods sold. And since beginning inventory in the facts is understated by 16,000, cost of goods sold must also be understated by 16,000. And that leads to an overstatement of gross profit by 16,000. And that leads to an overstatement of net income, retained earnings, and stockholders' equity. They're all overstated by 16,000. Because the question asked, if beginning inventory is understated by 16,000 and there's no other errors, what's the impact on cost of goods sold, retained earnings, and total stockholders' equity? And the answer is A. All right, how about this now? If beginning inventory is understated by 16,000 and ending inventory is overstated by 12,000 and there's no other errors, what's the impact on cost of goods sold? All right, A says cost of goods sold is overstated by 28,000. B says it's understated by 28,000. C, it's understated by 4,000. D, it's overstated by 4,000. And the answer is B, it's understated by 28,000. And this is because beginning inventory is understated by 16, then cost of goods sold is also understated by 16. Because there's a direct relationship between beginning inventory and cost of goods sold. As beginning inventory goes, so goes cost of goods sold. They're both understated by 16,000. Okay, now let's go to ending inventory. It says it's overstated by 12,000. Well, then cost of goods sold is understated by 12,000. This is because of the inverse relationship between ending inventory and cost of goods sold. So as ending inventory goes, cost of goods sold goes the other way. So therefore, with two separate understatements, cost of goods sold finishes the year understated by 28,000. Letter B is correct. Because the question asked, if beginning inventory is understated by 16,000 and ending inventory is overstated by 12,000 and there's no other errors, what's the impact on cost of goods sold? And the answer is, cost of goods sold is understated by 28,000. Let's try this. Browning Corp. discovered a material understatement of ending inventory. If there are no other errors, what is the impact on working capital and total stockholders' equity for the current year? A says working capital understated, total stockholders' equity overstated. B, working capital understated, total stockholders' equity understated. C, working capital overstated, total stockholders' equity understated. D, working capital overstated, total stockholders' equity overstated. And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments or the community section. And remember to like and subscribe because I may be going live on YouTube one day soon and you don't want to miss that. So if you found this video helpful and want to see the end of it and more videos like it, go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road. I-75 is the only material that you will need to pass any of the CPA exam parts. But if you're here for the other courses, just click here where it says other I-75 courses and you can click on EA or CMA and we'll bring you right there. So get yourself on I-75 with me. Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll leave a link in the description. Hey, it's Darius, and congratulations to I-75ers who let me know that they passed the CPA exam this month, and also last month. So congratulations to them. Now, what about you? Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on this list for you next month.